Right, I'm currently in a Ford. Uh, I don't actually know what Ford it is. What is what is this car? I don't know. Uh, my missus has been driving this car actually because uh, I had a customer come down to Bingley the other day and they were like, have you got any Range Rover Evokes in stock? And I was like, yeah, we have. We actually didn't have any, uh, but my missus has got one and I thought I'll just sell them her car. So yeah, sold them her car. She's been driving this and I need a big car today because I'm on the way to Tony's house. Uh, Tony's the fella that's doing the, the fabrication, all, all of the bodywork on my E46 M3 touring project and I need to collect the interior from, from Tony's house today. So we're gonna go over there today, see how Tony's getting on. I'm curious to know how he's getting on because um, I know he's moving forward with it. Uh, it'd be just be interesting to see what he's saying about the whole project and obviously collect the interior as well. So we won't be doing nothing with the interior in today's video, but I have got someone lined up to re-trim the whole interior, right? So we're just gonna literally cut this section of the video here, cut to the scene, and we're gonna drop you some cinematics of the touring project in three seconds, yeah? Three, two, one. Yeah, I'm all in. Brody on the line, I'm tapping in. Got out here pulling the strings for me. A girl on the line, she, she feeling me. Preoccupied by the motivation. Put in the time, pay the entry fee. Bro on the rise, yeah, he kind of nice. Inside of my mind, no one's real as me. Lately, life has been gorgeous. Wake up the clear, my eyes hit recorded. Praise up to God, I ain't chasing no bitch. Swinging the miss, got me hitting these licks. I get the orders, don't get it distorted. Disconnected, I've been cordless, I've been cordial, I've been exploring. I got a whole lot, but some high one more. That's it. Here it is then, my wonderful E46. M3 touring project and here is the man himself, Tony. <laughs> Tony, the car's changed a lot since I last yeah. seen it. Like a hell of a lot. You've done loads, didn't you? Yeah. Um firstly that before we go into the front end, because I know that's probably the most complicated part of this car. At the minute it is anyway. It is, yeah. The rear end, because last time I saw it, you'd literally just stitch this panel in here from the M3. For those that don't know, that is an M3, right? Hence the badge on the back, right? The rear quarters have come off that M3, and my man Tony, who's not here today, has put the rear quarter of that from that M3 onto this touring car. Look at it. You put these this section into the door, yeah. and you said you were then going to go away, fill it, and get it prepped, prepped up for paint. Yeah. This here. Do you want to tell us about it? Was that a bit of a drama to make that trim work? It is, yeah. Because if you can, if you see, normally these doors are more or less dead straight. Mm -hmm. Probably not showing it well on camera, but if you actually come to this side, you can see how drastic that flicks out. You can, can't you? See how wide see, that is. So although it looked like a tiny piece on that door, yeah, it's a. Uh, it's actually, it's actually quite. It's lot. actually quite substantial. So, yeah, you can see how much the door's so flared. Normally that's, normally that's straight, so if you imagine it would just continue along, you can see how much extra, extra wide that is. Yeah, yeah, so, and then in this section here, uh, yeah. mate, did you say you had to put a panel yeah, in there as well? I, I ran into a few rust issues with this car. Um, quite a few, quite a few repair <laughs> panels had to be made, so down here, I had to put a repair section in because I didn't really, I knew it was bubbling down there, but it's mm -hmm. only when you start da in and grinding back, you realize how how rusty the actual car is. And yeah, yeah. It was just too bad. Really? Yeah, it's, it's, so I had to cut it out and put a repair section in there. Obviously we know about the other side, around the other side where there was, I think last time we picked up on camera, there was a huge, Patch of there was, rust a, there, there was a rust there. All that, all that's been renewed now. Bloody all, hell. All new repair panels are in there. So, yeah. I all, suppose that is the nature of doing this kind of big project, isn't it? Yes. You're going to find little horror you stories. Are, it's a know, 52 plate car. Right, you know. I mean, I've still got to deal with this here, but this doesn't look structural at all, so I'm not overly worried about this section mm -hmm. um, as of yet. But that's that will that that'll is, all come together. Danny sorting as well, didn't it? When we sort that wing out, yeah. So the side trim that was on the door, I know this is silly, but this is the, these little things that you're over, having to overcome with this project, yeah. these are the little things that are gonna make this a proper nice yeah. car, aren't they? So is the actual trim that was on this door originally now gonna fit this? Yes. Really? Yeah. So, and the- I need to, you need to, cause obviously they're designed straight. Cause they're so flat, cause obviously- probably, I can... Yeah, you'll probably see it, cause the sun is, um, 
if you look directly down it, you can see, well, as we were talking about, it flicks out. You so can see how I'll have to modify the molding to suit like these seals. Cool. Um, <laughs> so when you when it's all buttoned up, it, yeah. will, it will sit in there beautifully. Nice, so, man. Yeah. And then the trim obviously continues through into the front wing, but then you notice here that the M3 wing <laughs> yeah. is not in line with the uh, no. the car itself. So right. is that is that something you was anticipating, mate? <laughs> to be honest uh, with you, this the front wings are becoming a bit of a jigsaw puzzle. Really? Yeah. I could, obviously, we've both researched it. We've both spoke about you know how this was done, and we've seen. In previous in previous mods that people have done around the world, there were quite a few cuts, mm -hmm. and I often wondered why have they cut it all the way down here and there, and what, why have they done that? Like you know, it's only when you actually go to do the job you realise realise why. That's and the only way why, to do it, and this is why. As you can see, mm -hmm. right, if we you can see this this swage lines relatively level. Yeah, it's just hung on there. So it lines up here. Yeah, that's fine. That's acceptable. Mm -hmm. All down there looks fine from there. Yeah, as you follow the wing down, it all starts changing. So it looks okay there. Yeah, as you can see, the M3 wings are actually quite a lot longer. They're a lot longer, yeah, and they've got the piece in the. Is garage. that sitting out further as well? That, exactly. Really. Yeah. So you can see the depth. So. That explains why normally people cut it up here because they tuck the wing under, essentially pushing the wing in. Oh, this just then, seems... then if you look around the other side, yeah, you can see why all this is missing because we want to get this, we want to get this molding piece bang in the right. Of course right we position. do. So that's got to flow through. And Correct. That is why we've ended up with the back wing of the section so basically the wing that was um, given to us yeah uh, this is the only bit that we need from it so quick shout out to Max by the way Max Rose on Instagram sent us these two wings so they are wings off of just a normal touring mm. and so you've cut this this is the only part of that wing that you needed basically. but obviously this is vital for this. this is vital yeah so basically as you can see if yeah. you just mock it up you can see that that's roughly how what it would be that's so. what you're trying to achieve yeah but then the side grills yeah. obviously a big feature on an m3 yeah. they've got to still stay stay is that is they've that got to move forward so they're going to come to accommodate yeah so they've got to move <laughs> forward really um, and because we need to use the original grills because we want this to be as original as possible um, that's the exact size yeah so this will ultimately end up Shifting forward Shifting slightly. Shifting forward there. So you'd have to modify that section yes. of the wing there. Yeah, and hence why in we saw loads of loads of cuts and welds to these front wings. Yeah, Th this is the reason why. It, 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 to be, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I knew that you wish you never took the job on. Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> that as well. No, but um, I, I didn't anticipate how much how much that was going to take. Nah. How much work? I, I didn't. I, I thought it was as <laughs> simple as because we knew this section of the wing here yeah. was different on yeah. on the coupe and the touring, and, and I just assumed that you'd yeah. just even even the height even the height of the wing. I was just going to. You can see that more yeah. on well, you can see look, it there, can't you? You could see that. See, for that wing to, you'd have to force that wing up, and then which then pushes that swage line up. Of course. So, but then when I release it, you'll see that swage line just naturally fall to where it should. To where be. it should be. So the bottom of the wing. Is the that bottom of the wing needs modifying? The side of it needs modifying. Thanks, <laughs> girl. <laughs> so, uh, so the rear, the rear end's prepped. The rear bumper. Uh, what's the plan with that? Because I know I did. Oh, I, yeah. I need to. I'm still yet to. Oop. I need to get the top half of the touring bumper from VRS. Yeah. So I need to pick that uh, bumper up and the bonnet. Mm -hmm. Got to do it when we were moving. Yeah. The top. Um, and then that bumper will get the top half will get grafted onto it. And after that. Yeah. The engine bay is going to be yet to engine do. Bay, yeah, wheels going to so, start. Yeah. So probably the next time we see this car on the channel now, it's going to be finished. In red paint, is hopefully, yeah. hopefully, yeah. There's no hiccups. Fingers crossed. The 
but the engine bay. So basically the idea is to paint the whole outside of the car yeah. in a molar red, so mm -hmm. that's what you wanted. Yeah. Um, it's gonna go back to VRS, they're gonna absolutely gut everything out. Mm -hmm. And when it's a bare, bare shell, uh, Will's gonna give us a call, I'm gonna come down, prep the bay, mm -hmm. and then paint it, paint it at his workshop. If not, maybe a uh, booth yeah. that's available to us. Lo local to VRS. Along with the rear boot floor. Ah, oh, the boot floor he's doing as well, yeah. of course, yeah, yeah. The size guts as well, I noticed you put them on. I, I, yeah. They weren't, been... they weren't straightforward either, were they? No, because, again, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of... Because of the this. rake of this arch, yeah. a lot of people I noticed online, they, they just put this section of the M3 wheel arch in, but then kind of mould it into the standard bodywork which is fine because what, what what they're essentially doing is they're not widening the door mm -hmm. so that's that's fine i mean that's originally what the concept m3 was was really uh, wasn't it you you see it in the pictures that this was a standard narrow body rear door, door yeah and the arch kind of got lost yeah yeah which is we not what we didn't want that now nah. being difficult yeah. so, <laughs> so we've uh, we fled everything out but no then problem being if I were to lose this arch in, because normally this panel here is dead straight. Yeah. If I were to lose it, it would have looked a bit, bit wouldn't have looked wrong right, at the bottom. Yeah, a bit wrong at the bottom. So we've ended up with a little bit of a flare, mm -hmm. which I think looks nice. So what I've done to make sure this suits is I heat, put a bit of heat into the panel because it's only plastic, and I've actually bent that panel out so it now. It now follows the line of the car. So if we quickly hop over to the other side, you'll see that you haven't that done that. It hasn't been done yet. And you'll see it sits in. So There's like a little That's right. So there. eventually when I heat this up, you're gonna pull it that end out. Up looking like Yeah. Like nice and symmetrical. Brilliant. It's, it's just a subtle all these little things I'd yeah. say about the trim, the, this bit, the front grills, the right. the fact that that trim down, all these little Little, I suppose, bits of detail. It's what's important for this job, isn't it? Right. And it will be right. It's going to take you a lot, a lot more work, a lot more time than you expected, but it'll be worth it, wouldn't it? Yeah. Something else, Tony, we was going to talk about is uh, the rear quarters, because obviously last time we saw the rear quarters, it was, it was cut, wasn't it? And there was a gap, and then you dots the weld along the wing. And yeah. I want you to show off your fancy welding on the inside of the wing. In there. Right, so basically, <laughs> to, to finish to finish this can off, it needed to be continuously welded. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you can't continuously weld this thickness gauge metal because you'll get heat distortion, you'll get blowback in the panels, and everything. What like over time, it would look a bit wrong. Well, even when you're welding, really, it's very, yeah, it's very difficult. Okay. It's very difficult to continuously weld a mm -hmm. gauged metal like that continuously. Too much heat will blow the panels, so you you have to stitch it and then you end up with welds like this. Nice. You, what you want to look for is, this is called penetration. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the weld is actually penetrated through both sides of the metal, mm -hmm. so you know that is not going anywhere. Nice, and then the outer edge of it, the outer side of it's the filled. The outer is obviously filled. Yeah, it's just like a skim of filler. It's just filler. a skim of filler, and yeah. the filler we use to keep it all original. Yeah. It's a BMW. Mm -hmm. um, it's an original BMW. Filler. Oh really? Yeah, you using... original bit of it's not cheap. You can you can buy this from any BMW dealer mm -hmm. with this part number, but this is a BMW multi-purpose body filler. So we're using BMW filler. We're using BMW products to finish the to finish it because that's a raw filler. Mm -hmm. So if you want a finer, finer finish, which we do, I use dolphin glaze oh, right. on top of that. And that's basically like a self-leveling polyurethane. So it sort of finds its, finds its yeah, level and such. Yeah, and it just fills in all the little scratches and makes it look pretty. And then the paint as well. Paint's going to be BMW. Paint's all original BMW. Everything's from the BMW colour system, what they call the BMW colour system. So even down to like silicon removers, there's a colour system. BMW ah, group. right. Everything original. Well, so next chapter is it's going to be in red, um, in probably a few weeks, and that's it. We're done. Got to need to get the interior into the Ford, and I can go home. So, cool. see you later. Yeah, cool. thank you, mate. <laughs>
it back in the Cougar. Cougar, that's what it was. Uh, yeah, so how cool is my car gonna be? So it's all being done in BMW product, products by a BMW bodywork technician and it's going to BMW main dealer now to be painted as well. So uh, the finish of that body is gonna be unbelievable. I might even, it'd be cool to get like a BMW sticker in the back window, we'll see. But uh, we've got the interior in the back, so I'm gonna be doing a follow-up video about the company that are doing the interior. And again, I couldn't have a better person for the job when it comes to the interior. So. The, the finish of this car is going to be unbelievable. Just something whilst I um, think of it, these shoes here, size 14, Air Max 95s, random change of subject. Uh, I bought a pair of these because I just gave a pair away on Planet Dreams uh, for free to one of my followers. I thought I fancy a pair of them myself. And I just thought, do you know what? That competition went so well, I think I'll get another pair of them on there. So if you want to be in for a chance of winning a free pair of Air Max 95s, head over to my website, planetdreams.co.uk. Link will be in the description below. I might even pin a comment in the comments as well, all right? Also, I'll put a link to Tony's Instagram in the description below. Check him out, show him some love. He's a legend, and without him, this would be impossible, all right? So, Wheel at VRS has also contacted me to say that the internals have arrived for the engine. We are fully forging the engine on this car as well, so just to add to the level of craziness that we're going to with this car. So, uh, yeah, look out for a follow-up video on, on that, follow-up video on the interior and a follow-up video on painting the car, all right? So, gonna end it here. Need to head back on my journey home. Thank you very much for watching. Hit like, free request for you. Yeah, first one is hit like if you like the video. Second one is hit subscribe if you're new to my channel. And then the third and final one is if you're on Instagram, give me a follow on Instagram at Calvin Cardo, all right? And I'll see you in my next video. Bye. In the next episode of Diary of Car Trader, I've done a video talking to you lot about the plans that I've got for my R35 Nissan GTR.